when a man when a man sins, it is pronounced what should be a lot in sorrow, shall thou eat of it, or the produce of the grass all the days of their life, but also more particular to the tribulation which the disciples of Christ shall all the more or less experience. John chapter 16 and verse 33, in the world, in the world, John 16, 33, in the world ye shall have tribulation. The tribulation of unbelievers is the effort, is the effect of the wrath of God. But the affection, afflictions of his people are corrections which so far from separating us from his love yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness and are from their profit that they may not be condemned with the world but he partakes uh, be partakers of his holiness as many as I love as many as I love I rebuke and chasten so the affliction that God places on believers is because he wants to bring them to a place of greater uh, sanctification. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Second word is distress, which signifies difficulties, critical situations. It means the perplexities in which we are when under pressure or trouble we see no way of deliverance and no way to escape the pressures it presents us. And I would say at least once or twice a week we might say that. Yeah. We're under some kind of pressure during the week, during the year. We are perplexed by what is troubling us in the world. Man, if you listen to the news, Mr. Obama is going to really destroy us, and if we keep we if we keep dealing with him, he's another Hitler and another Mo um, 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 uh, you know. Uh, folks, don't put your time and focus on the president. He's right where God wants him, and he'll do just exactly what God desires for him to do. And regardless, he wants us to focus on God, not on the president. Right. The word denotes a narrow place. We see no way of deliverance and no way to escape presented to us. The word denotes a narrow place in which we are so pressured and straightened that we know not where to go or turn, which expresses the condition of the believer when he is not only oppressed but reduced to extremities. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress, you know where that's found? I'll let you know. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. Chapter 4 and verse 1. Thou, Psalms 4 and 1. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. So the question is, is it sin for a Christian to be under distress? No. It's all gone. If, we were, if, if it was a sin, we'd be doing it all the time. Amen. But we need to focus on how to get out of it. Number, then number three is persecution. Persecution and affliction for the profession of the gospel. The persecutions have often been pursued and constrained to flee from place to place as the Lord Jesus Christ was carried into Egypt when Herod sought to kill him. If they had persecuted me, they will also persecute you. But so far in persecution from separating believers from the love of Christ, that blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. You know, where that, where, what's that found in? It's known as the, the Beatitudes. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Okay. Well, let's try number four. I'm already depressed, aren't you? <laughs> number four. Famine. To this, the persecuted are frequently subjected 
though they may have been rich and powerful, have lost everything they've got. They have nothing because of their righteous living. They've decided by living right, they've lost everything. It could happen. Number five, nakedness. The disciples have often been reduced to poverty, stripped by their enemies, and wandering naked in deserts, and to hide themselves like wild beasts in caves of the earth. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 38, Paul himself was frequently exercised with hunger and thirst and fasting and cold and nakedness. Can you imagine how Paul felt at times trying to preach the gospel, trying to travel the world that he knew of, and at every turn he was either stoned or killed, been knocked down for dead, hiding in rocks, hiding in caves as it were, fasting and cold and naked. But he saw it as a means that God was still using him. Number six is pearl. Pearl. This refers to the dangers to which the Lord's people are exposed. These that sometimes and in some countries are exceedingly many and great. And at all times and in all countries are more or less numerous and trying. If God were not their protector, even in this land of freedom, the followers of the land, we would be cut off and injured. It is God's providence that averts such injuries and overrules events for the protection of his people. You know, I really take it literally. You know, I, I, you know, I, I don't, I, I maybe, you know, I literally take that God is protecting me. And sometimes he tests to see if I really believe that. But I really believe that God has shown himself in many ways how he has protected us from injury. I think we take God's grace for granted, don't you? Yep. I think if we would stop and think how near death we've come, I don't know that we always see all that's around us. I don't know that we, we rarely see the lurking of, of demons and Satan and all of his powers coming around us lurking to, to cause us injury. I don't know if we see that. We're, sometimes we're unaware of that. If it wasn't for the grace of God, they would attack us. And when God's got a work for us to do, when God got, we, Terry and I have traveled and traveled and traveled, and you would not know the near accidents that we have because of my driving. You thought Johnny had been driving. <laughs> the places I've done and the places I've gone, you could have swore Johnny was, tra was driving. <laughs> I, we 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 smelt smoke. We saw tires skid. We've heard horns blow, and we've seen people put their fingers out the window at us. <laughs> and I'm telling you, only by the grace of God, we were spared, and we could have been dead in an instant. Near accidents. This happened all the way around us. And I don't want to take that for granted. No. I want to give God credit for protecting us. And I believe he does. <coughs> but let a Christian habitually consider his safety and his protection as security from the Lord rather than by the liability of the time. That time never yet was when the Lord's people could be safe. If circumstances removed the strength from the wicked, if God released the restraint on the wicked, we could be killed in an instant. 
you know, 90%, I understand 90% of the murders and killings that are done in the world today, or in America anyway, is drug related. They kill each other. Most of the killings that take place, even in our area and in West Virginia, are family related, drug related, domestic killings. They are not believers, they're not Christians. They, 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 that's the wrath of God on their lives. But I believe those who, of us who love God, God restrains a lot of times the wickedness that's all around us. That's the reason I have little fear. I have little fear of what could happen to me because I'm in the protection of God. I hope I'm not taking that for granted. But I sense that. Those who boast of their unbounded liber liberty would, if in situations calculate, to develop their natural hatred of truth and, and provide all the bitter per persecution. I'm sharing with you is that we better not take it <coughs> that it is us that's doing it. You know, you can, I, I think you should. I think that you should lock your church doors. I think you should put up signs. There's a dog inside. The best way for me not to visit you is to put a sign. There's a dog here. And I'm telling you, I won't come near that door, that gate. If, if you put signs, this is security by, by an alarm system. You know, there's, there's detectors. You know, all that may be good, but my security is not in that sound system. I told Charity on the way over. I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm going to, I'm going to be a car. I'm going to be a card carry gun holder. What else did I say? I'm going to come to church with a gun in my pocket. I, I, I'm just. I'm afraid of some of you. You know. And so I'm going to make sure that somebody comes into church. So I can take care of myself. I just hope I don't shoot Bill in the process. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's one reason why I should not carry a gun. <laughs> I'm not going to give Mary a gun. You don't have a gun, do you, Mary? Hello, you don't have a gun? Not on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't tell people you got a gun if you have one because it'll take the advantage off of it. But I don't live in fear. You know, I can walk through this building at night with the lights off and not have any worries at all. Amen. You know, I wouldn't mind going through cemeteries at night. The only time I get scared is when I hear a dog bark, and then I'm no problem. <laughs> okay, number seven. Let's get over with this and quit. Number seven, sword. This means violence carry to the uttermost to the extremities what if we lived in those parts of the Middle East today we have it easy what if we lived Cherry and I lived in Chicago for, in, in the neighborhoods of where there was a lot of gang related crimes I visited in those areas didn't have a and when I was a probation officer, I went places that if I'd have known that it was dangerous, I probably would have been scared, but I was completely in confidence that the Lord was on my side. <coughs> it is persecution which stops not with smaller injuries, but inflicts even to death. None of that can separate you from the love of God. If you remember that God's love cannot change. God's love cannot change toward you. It's permanent. It began at it began at the time. It began at at uh, before the foundation of the world, and it will continue throughout all eternity. His love for you cannot change. No. But His love will do some things to you to get you to love you more. Oh yeah. But it will be because He wants you to draw you closer to you. So the scripture says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
shall tribulation, our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our pearl, our sword. And we can say positively tonight that none of those can separate us from the love of God. Because he's going to pour his love in you to keep you safe in your spirit so that you'll love him for more and more and more. Amen? Amen. Johnny, I want you to come and sing us a couple songs tonight and then we'll be dismissed. Uh -huh. <laughs> Try to get on your good side. Come up and sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping not trying. <laughs> but I do want you to come sing for us tonight. <laughs> it's all right. You come you get me close. Give us about two songs. And if you're real good, you can sing a third one, I'll let you know. <laughs> uh, he's all right. I ain't either. That's why we're part left, I think. Amen. I mean, don't he look nice tonight today? Yep. Isn't he looking more like a Baptist all the time? Amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> now we just need to act like that. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm getting in trouble all day. <laughs> oh. Man, I didn't know I went that long. <laughs>